So I just wanted to show a close-up of the clover design, granny square. And also I have the classic granny square I wanted to show. There's a separate video tutorial for the classic granny square. Some fun that I had with the colors. And again, I'll have a PDF download that you can take with you when trying to find the different yarn colors that you want for your project, particular project. And again, there's a separate video tutorial for each of these, the Granny Square, Classic Granny Square, and then the Clover Granny Square. I have another video tutorial of the Classic Granny Square on my YouTube channel from 5 May 2015, and it has some different color schemes in that one. So if you wanted to check out some more color schemes, you can go to that one. And then I also have a separate video tutorial that shows you how to crochet the two granny squares or all of the granny squares together. In my last video tutorial with the classic granny square, I used a 5mm crochet hook. For this video tutorial, I'm using my 5.75mm crochet hook and the size difference is negligible. You're not even going to be able to tell the size difference. So again, I'm using a 5.75 millimeter crochet hook for this video tutorial. But you could use any size crochet hook that you want to. I'm just showing what it would look like with the 5.75 millimeter. And I'm also using a pair of scissors and a tapestry needle or darning needle. This project is great for scraps of yarn if you have a lot of yarn left over. I'm going to have these available for a PDF download. That way you can get an idea of some different color schemes. I use this one myself. I just download it when I'm looking for different yarn colors. So this is the one that I'm going to show you right now. So I chose this color scheme for one of mine. And here is what it looks like. So I've already finished this one, and this one it was made with a 5.75 millimeter crochet hook. This one was made with a 5 millimeter crochet hook. So you can see that you can't, you can't really tell a difference between the two hook sizes. But that's something to be aware. Different crochet hook sizes will affect the size of your crochet work as well as yarn choice. So again, these will be available on my website for free PDF download. So for video tutorial, I chose to make a color scheme similar to this one. So I'm going to show you what yarn I used for the yellow, the purple, and then I didn't have any of this pretty green, pastel green, so I'm using like a light blue, and then I have a pastel light pink. So again, I'm using a lot of my leftover yarn. This is my bright yellow red heart leftover yarn. I also have Big Twist Value yarn leftover. This is a lilac color. Let me just give you some information about this yarn. So equivalent yarns I've used in my um, when I use it for this pattern. Then for the brown I'm using with Red Heart Love, so my leftover chocolate brown. For the pink I'm using Bernat Baby Sport so I'm going to give you some information about this yarn. You can use equivalent yarns to this one. And this is the pastel pink color. So you'll have plenty left over. And then also I'm using a similar yarn as the Bernat Baby Sport. This is actually Pound of Love and it's a light blue color. So the first color I'm starting with is my light pink. I'm going to go ahead and take the yarn, fold it over on itself to form a loop. Then I'm going to take my crochet hook, I'm using my 5.75 millimeter crochet hook, go right through the loop, hold the base of the loop with your middle finger and thumb, then just yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring the yarn through the center of the loop for your slip knot. Go ahead and cinch down that knot, and then just bring the loop around your crochet hook, not too tight, not too loose, and we're going to start with our chain. So we're going to start with a chain of five. Go ahead and yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the loop for one, two, three, four, 
and 5. Now we're going to slip stitch this chain into a circle. So you're going to take your crochet hook, go into that first chain that you made, and then you're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and bring it through both loops for a slip stitch. And then that forms a ring with your chain. Then you're going to chain three, one, two, three. So that counts, that first chain three counts as your first double crochet. And as we crochet into the center of the circle, you're going to be burying your loose yarn end as you crochet. So now you're going to yarn over, go into the center of the circle, go behind your loose yarn end, bring up a loop. You have three loops on the hook. We're going to complete a double crochet. So yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through two of the loops. You have two loops remaining on the hook. Yarn over, turn the hook upside down, and go through the two remaining loops. So now you have two double crochet in the center of the circle. You're going to make one more. So yarn over, go into the center of the circle, go behind your loose yarn end, bring up a loop, make your third double crochet. So now you have a total of three double crochet. Now you're going to chain three. One, two, three. Then you're going to make three more double crochet into the center of the circle. So you yarn over, go into the center of the circle, and I'm still going behind my loose yarn end, and then make your double crochet. So now you need two more. So now you have two sets of three double crochet, and they're separated by a chain three. We need a total of four of these sets around the circle. So I'm going to make one more with you. You're going to chain three. Then you're going to make three double crochet into the center of the circle. So now you have three sets of three, double crochet, and they're separated by a chain three. So now you're going to chain three and make one more set of three double crochet, and then come back. I almost did that gracefully, <laughs> but still dropped it. So anyway, now I have four sets of three double crochet. I'm going to go ahead and cut my loose yarn end. Make sure that you only cut the loose yarn end and not anything else. Then, after you have your four sets of three that are separated by a chain three, you're going to make your last chain three. One, two, three. Then you're going to make a slip stitch into the top of stitch of the first chain three that you made. So I'm just going to show you this with my tapestry needle. This is our first chain three. Here's the bottom chain, here's the middle chain, and then here's the top chain. So you're going to go right into that top chain of that first chain three to make your slip stitch. So you just bring the yarn through both loops on the hook to complete the slip stitch. And that completes the first round of your classic granny square. Now I should tell you that 
there are all kinds of different methods of making the granny square. And you're going to find that out when you follow my new blog because on my new blog I'm going to be putting different designs for the granny square right on the blog. So it'll be a new series that I'm starting and of course I'm going to start with the classic granny square for the first one and I'm also having another different style of a granny square available too for now. But if you follow my blog post you'll see that I'm adding new designs all the time. So you can go there periodically and check what new designs I've added for the granny square. So now we're going to move to the first chain three loop in the corner. So each of these chain three loops is one of the corners of the granny square. So you're going to take your crochet hook, you're going to go into the next stitch over, make your slip stitch, and then you're going to go into the next stitch over and make your slip stitch. and then you're going to slip stitch into that corner space, chain 3 space. And this is where I join my new color, if you're joining a new color. If not, you're just going to follow along for the second round, but if you want to change colors, this is how I change colors. My next color is going to be light blue, so I'm going to go ahead and bring up a loop with my new color. Then I'm going to go ahead and chain one. I'm going to set my work down, cut my previous colored yarn, tie a knot, and I like my work to be really secure, so you'll notice that for some of my knots, I'm going to tie it three times. Then you can go ahead and make your chain of three to start the round. So we're starting our second round now with a chain of three. And again, that counts as your first double crochet for the second round. Now we need two more double crochet into the same chain three space. And at the same time, you're going to bury both of your loose yarn ends. So go ahead and yarn over, go into the same chain three space, Go behind your loose yarn ends, bring up a loop, make your double crochet, and we're going to make a set of three, so we have two so far. Then you're going to make a chain of three, one, two, Three. Then you're going to make three more double crochet into the same chain three space for the corner. And again, I'm still going behind my loose yarn ends. So you finished two chain three loop sets and then a chain three loop that separates them. Now you can go ahead and cut the previous colored yarns that you buried. Now you can chain one. and then make a double crochet into the, the next chain three loop. So yarn over, go into the next chain three loop, make your double crochet, and then repeat. So I'm going to repeat this set with you so you know how to do it. So a set of three double crochet. Then you're going to chain three this is our second corner. And then you're going to make another set of three double crochet into the same chain three loop.
And then you can see how you finished your second corner the same way that you did your first corner. Now, between each corner, you have a chain one stitch. So you just chain one now and then repeat. So go ahead, finish your last two corners and then come back. So this is what my work looks like so far. And I'm going to finish my last. Let me make sure. Because you want to make sure you finish your last chain one. Then you can slip stitch into the top stitch of that first chain three that you made, the exact same thing that you did for finishing up round one. And again, you're going to slip stitch to the corner. So you're going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch. Slip stitch into the next stitch. And then slip stitch into the corner. Then for mine, I'm going to go ahead and change colors. But you can see how I have the two sets of three double crochet on each corner and they're separated by a chain three space and then on each side of the square you have a chain one space. So now I'm going to join my new color which is the light purple. So for those of you changing your color you go ahead and change it like I did and for those that want the same color just continue on just like we're going to do now. So now you're going to chain three one, two, three, and then you're going to make your set of three. So remember, this counts as your first double crochet. So I need two more double crochet. I'm still I'm burying my loose yarn ends as I crochet. Now I'm going to make a chain of three. and then make three, a set of three double crochet again. I'm going to fix that one. So now I have two sets of three in the corner, three double crochet, and then the chain three loops separate th separating them in the corner. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut my loose yarn ends. It's always nice to bury your loose yarn ends so you don't have to do it later. It makes it a lot quicker for finishing the work and it looks pretty on the back. So now you have a chain one space on the side. So now we have a chain one space to work into. So this will be increasing the number of double crochet and stitches in the round. So what you're going to do now is you're going to chain one and then this time along the side you're going to make three double crochet into the previous rounds chain one space. So you just yarn over, go into that chain one space and make three double crochet, a set of three. and then chain one and that brings you to the next corner. So again in the next corner you're going to repeat the same pattern that we did for the first corner. You're going to make a set of three double crochet Then you're going to make a chain of three. And then you're going to make another set of three double crochet in the same chain three space. And then you completed another corner. So you're going to complete each side the same way 
and each corner the same way and then come back. You can see how it's turning out gorgeous and why people love this design and the fun that you can have with it. I've already joined my next color in the corner so now I'm going to go ahead and chain three and then make my set of three, chain three, set of three, double crochet. So now I have the set of three double crochet, the chain three for the corner, and then my set of three double crochet. So now I'm just going to show you the side so you can see that now we have more. We've increased the number of stitches along the side, which is what we want. So now you're going to chain one and then make three double crochet into the previous rows, chain one space. So now we have another chain one space here, so we're going to chain one and then make three double crochet into the next chain one space. And you'll find that you can make this granny square as small or as large as you want. So you just keep going and each subsequent round will have more chain one spaces to fill just like this before you get to your corner. So now you're going to chain one and then create your three double crochet with a chain three between them. So there's my three double crochet stitches in the corner. I'm going to chain three and then make three double crochet into the same corner space. And that's how you create this round. So go ahead, finish this round, and then come back. So I've already joined the last round with the chocolate brown color. And you can see how it just really brings out the colors in the granny square. So now I finished my last slip stitch and I just wanted to show you the chain one spaces for the last round and then each of the corners. So it's made the exact same way except you have more spaces along the sides. Then you can take and go ahead after you make your slip stitch you can go ahead and finish off. So just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury the loose yarn end in your work. So now you can take your tapestry needle and place the loose yarn tapestry needle on the loose yarn end and then you can bury it into your work. I just weave it in to one of the corner spaces and then just bury it. And then sometimes I'll go back across to make sure it's nice and buried. And then I'm going to go ahead and just cut it. And that is your classic granny square. And like I said, you can make it smaller or you can make it as large as you want. And just have a lot of fun with this pattern.